Hi, my name is Jason Shu. I'm co-director of retina research at Wills Eye Hospital, and I'm here in the Wills newsroom with Anthony Obeyed, our clinical research fellow at Wills Eye Hospital as well. And we're here to talk about a very important issue about loss to follow-up. Patients that have bad eye disease, diabetic retinopathy, the severest form called proliferative diabetic retinopathy, and the fact that we're seeing that a lot of these patients are not coming back for treatment. Um, Anthony, why don't you tell us a little bit about that first study we did. Thank you, Dr. Shear. So the original study basically evaluated loss to follow-up immediately post-treatment, either pan-retinal photocoagulation or anti-VEGF injections in patients with proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And over four years, we evaluated approximately 2,000 patients. And what we found is that around one in four patients, or or 25%, uh, did not return after receiving a treatment for proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Wow, and that's quite alarming to think about a quarter of patients not coming back after receiving treatment, which are the highest risk patients of vision loss in this disease. Now, why do we think this is important? Is, what's the difference between these anti-VEGF injections that we're hearing about and laser treatment for proliferative diabetic retinopathy? Uh -huh. So lasers somewhat gold standard um, and basically it is known to have a durable effect many years after treating the proliferative diabetic retinopathy eyes. Um, now recent clinical trials such as the protocol S and the Clarity trial are showing that anti-VEGF therapy, a new form of treatment, um, is equally or comparable to proliferative diabetic, sorry, comparable to panretinal photocoagulation um, in treating uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. However, it is commonly believed that these anti-VEGF injections require consistent follow-up uh, post-treatment as compared to panretinal photocoagulation. Um, however, we had no evidence as of, as of now, um, and that basically is why we conducted the next study, um, which its primary goal was to compare the outcomes between both treatments in eyes that were lost to follow-up after, after therapy. And how did we dis define sort of loss to follow-up in these studies? What does that mean? So for the first study, loss to follow-up was defined as a minimum of 12 months with no show after treatment um, for any treatment. So a patient might have received five injections or five sessions of panretinal photocoagulation, and all that was required was one session in which um, there was 12 months of no show right after treatment. And that study we found around one in four did not show up in that particular, uh, with that particular definition. In our second study, we shortened the interval a bit and we basically defined loss to follow up as greater than six months, given that patients can uh, experience adverse events um, in less than a year. Um, and basically we found a slightly higher number of patients that were lost to follow up um, and we found some significant disparities in the anatomic and functional outcomes in those, between those two treatments. So that's really the biggest question. So w let's highlight what the differences were. So how did the anti-VEGF group do after they were lost to follow up versus the patients that had the laser, the panretinal photocoagulation? Was there a difference between the two groups? Uh, so in terms of vision, both groups showed um, a drastic decline in vision or a significant decline upon return from loss to follow up. However, the really interesting part is the differences um, experienced after returning and uh, receiving additional treatment. The panretinal photocoagulation group actually recovered most of its vision and the average uh, visual acuity returned back to the visual acuity they had prior to being lost to follow up. On the other hand, the anti-VEGF group remained at that decreased vision um, and basically even after several treatment sessions with panretinal photocoagulation and additional injections, uh, they were unable to recover the vision. And how about the anatomic findings? Just highlight, I guess, the major differences we saw between the two groups in terms of anatomic outcomes. Uh -huh. So the two major differences that were quite worrying um, was that the anti-VEGF group actually experienced a uh, greater incidence of tractional retinal detachment, uh, a, a known adverse event of proliferative diabetic retinopathy that can be um, vision threatening, especially if it involves the center of the, the, the part of the retina that's uh, responsible for center vision. 
Um, additionally, they also experience a high incidence of neovascularization of the iris, um, basically uh, increased amount of blood vessels in the anterior section of the eye that can lead to neovascular glaucoma. And in fact, around two eyes uh, experience neovascular glaucoma in the anti-VEGF group compared to no eyes uh, in the panretinal photocoagulation group. And that's a potentially blinding disorder if you get that kind of neovascular glaucoma, so very worrisome. What about traction retinal detachments? Yeah, so the traction retinal detachment difference was quite striking. Around 30% of eyes uh, receiving anti-VEGF therapy prior to being lost to follow-up experienced the traction retinal detachment um, by the final visit after returning for follow-up. And this is compared to one eye in the panretinal photocoagulation group um, that constituted less than 5% uh, of eyes um, in that cohort. Wow, so quite a big difference between the two groups. So I guess, Anthony, what do you think are some of the take-home messages for our audience? I mean, the first take-home message, obviously, is that we have a good portion of our patients that are lost the follow-up post-treatment. Um, uh, another important message at the, is that given that we have this high rate of loss to follow-up, it's more crucial that we evaluate which treatment's more appropriate for our patients, especially given the disparities in uh, um, adverse events post-loss to follow-up. And that's great, Anthony. And I just want to reiterate that because of this high loss to follow-up, I think it's important for patients to know that it's critical to make sure you have ongoing care with your physician um, because, you know, we can have much worse outcomes, especially if you're receiving injections for the proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Um, in our own practice, I think a lot of us are thinking twice now about starting with those injections and really thinking more whether we should go back to the gold standard of laser treatment for these eyes. Thank you very much for joining us. Again, I'm Jason Shu, and this is Anthony Obeyed from the Will's Eye Newsroom. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again in the near future.